Most wild animals communicate amongst themselves. Breaking their code is not easy. Even with the right dictionary, would we still know what they really mean? Vervet monkeys are social animals, and with their bigger brains, it would seem natural for them to develop linguistic skills, at least to protect each other. Vervets live in tight family units. About the size of a small dog, they're coveted by any number of predators. Most animals use an all-purpose danger call to warn against immediate threats. But anything as vague as help or run would be disastrous for the vervets. Because they are attacked by different predators, they need to know what the threat is in order to escape it. When they see a snake, the vervets sound the alarm and keep a watchful eye out for the intruder. Now listen to this. The leopard signal triggers a frantic dash for the thinnest branches in the canopy, where the leopard has no chance. That's the vervet alarm call for eagle. This time, the monkeys seek thick protective vegetation to stay hidden until the coast is clear once again. By having three different alarm calls, the vervet's self-preservation system is much more efficient. So are these monkey words for snake, leopard and eagle? In the late 1970s, a group of scientists decided they were. It was a bombshell that changed the way we think about animals, though some scientists, like Dr. Hauser, took it all with a pinch of salt. That was the first indication that animals may have something that's kind of like a word. But if you really look in detail at the system, it looks to be very, very different from the human system of words. If the animal system were truly like the human system, there's no reason why they would stop at describing a small number of things in their environment. It should be explosive. Once you have the notion of reference, you can refer to things with an arbitrary relationship between sound and meaning. You're done. Vervet monkeys remain largely tongue-tied compared to humans, though their voices are vital for survival. The second and fundamental difference is that when animals communicate, they seem to be communicating about the here and now. I see a leopard, I give a leopard alarm call. The next step to develop real speech would be a giant leap for the animal kingdom and a giant leap of faith for scientists. In the 1950s, Keith and Catherine Hayes started a language experiment with a chimpanzee called Vicky. Vicky grew up with the Hayes' own children and the speaking program began. Progress was slow. After four years, all Vicky could manage was mama, papa, cup, and up. The experiment disappointed those who had hoped for a breakthrough, and it coincided with another major discovery. Apes may look and act like us, but because of the position of their larynx, they're physically incapable of real speech. Now, who am I? Papa? Papa? Can you say what this is? Apes and humans are poles apart. Dr. Hauser is fascinated by the different evolutionary paths animals and humans have taken. The, to me, extraordinary thing about thinking about the evolution of the mind is that animals were kind of humming along, thinking rich thoughts, but couldn't talk about them. The evolutionary fault line between man and ape is speech. I can have a relationship with somebody and go to somebody who's never seen or think, heard of anything about it and tell them absolutely in detail what I've just done. 
Um, that is an incredible capacity. Now, it doesn't mean that other animals are not interesting. It just means that that's something that we do and other animals don't seem to be able to do. If speech is unique to humans, does that mean we also have a monopoly on language? Dr. Penny Patterson has spent years trying to prove animals do have linguistic skills, even though they don't have the vocal apparatus to speak. Her experiment with Coco began in 1972. She knew Coco would never talk, so she used American Sign Language. Over the years, Coco grew, and so did her vocabulary. She now knows a thousand signs and understands 2,000 spoken words. Coco became a star. Penny's relationship with Coco grew so close that she dropped any pretense at scientific objectivity. Her work is controversial, and many scientists and linguists believe she gives Coco far too much credit. Who wouldn't? Coco takes her education very seriously. The problem is, because primates look like us, can we really expect them to be like us? A nice move I like to make is to say, take any given behavior you see in an animal that looks like us and just substitute something that doesn't look like us, like a slug or a chicken or a bat, and now imagine running the same kind of explanation on that future species. If you find you can do it as readily, fine. Um, but I think the, the cautionary note is that uh, it's too easy to fall into an interpretation of an animal's behavior just because it looks like us. So is the ape language camp deluding itself? You were brave and you were really brave. Dr. Sally Boysen runs a kind of school for primates at the Ohio State University Chimpanzee Center. She's taken chimps a step further and teaches them a wide range of cognitive skills. The latest exercise is word recognition. You look in? Find orange. Orange. Good boy. Good job. Bobby is tested on nine different foods. The researcher, Stephanie, asks him to match an item with a word on screen. The words appear randomly, so Bobby must make the correct choice. All right. Bobby deserves more than congratulations. Good job. Pop. Great. Bob, where's Pop? Great. Uh oh. Bobby, where's Pop? We're still in the early stages of looking at the chimp's ability to associate English words with foods and the names of other chimpanzees, etc. We're working with whole word recognition right now, but we will return to the individual um, alphabetic characters so the animals construct the word also. Banana! Where's banana? Banana. Bobby scores banana. consistently high marks, which is just as well since his appetite for M&Ms is insatiable. He really seems to be thinking about a problem, not just guessing. Good boy. Come on, peek a -boo. The Chimpanzee Center teaches more than just reading, writing, and arithmetic. Have a look. Dr. Boysen's team wants to find out how well chimpanzees communicate vocally with each other. How much information do they really exchange? We are currently interested in natural chimpanzee vocalizations as well. So we've been exploring just one category of vocalizations, and those are food barks. In the wild, as well as in captivity, chimps produce sounds when they see food. Are these food barks real words or just emotional responses? <laughs> Yeah. 
at the chimpanzee center, the chimps react to their likes and dislikes. <laughs> their food barks are recorded. Can you sit down, not on your chair? Stay right there. Good girl. Back okay. in the classroom, another chimp listens to the recordings listen. before identifying the barks. Good, Sheba. Peanuts. Good job, Sheep. We played a very simple game with the chimps. We played the recorded vocalization say, a vocalization that was collected when they saw lettuce. Not a big favorite. And then four pictures appeared, and they were to pick the picture that was possibly being referred to by the vocalization. And we were quite surprised when they actually were able to specify. That is, not, not only could they pick good foods, they could pick the specific good food. To the human ear, food barks sound pretty much the same. Okay. Dr. Boysen's next challenge is to crack the chimp's code. So now what we're going to try to do over the next several years is try to, to tease apart what part of that call really contributed to the decision making. That is, how did they make a decision between M&Ms and grapes when many of the, the acoustic features were very similar? High frequency, rapid periodicity, rapid temporal features, uh, and very different from not so good foods where the frequencies are lower and the time course is very different, uh, 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 as opposed to uh, 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 which are very different. This is exciting Sorry, new scientific Sheba. territory. Sorry. You ready to pay attention? It could lead to understanding far more about the evolutionary divide oh, between apes very and humans. Good, Sheba. Good girl. So we think it's a really interesting new direction to explore to see what kinds of possible vocal behaviors uh, might exist in the chimpanzee that could have been shared by a common ancestor. And when the two species diverged, the chimpanzee line and the human line from this common ancestor, what parts of that neurological organization did they maintain but the outcome was very different. That is, we went on to speech, they went on to their more finite call structure. It helps that chimps are noisy, talkative creatures with at least a semblance of speech. Other highly social animals seem to communicate in absolute silence. Elephants wander all day in search of food and water. They can consume 250 kilos of food and 160 liters of water every day. Herds need to keep a distance from one another so there's enough to go around. So how do they coordinate their movements over such vast areas, especially when resources are scarce at the end of the dry season? Dr. Caitlin O'Connell Rodwell, a biologist from Stanford University, has found a way into the mysterious sensory world of elephants. Welcome to Zoo Lights, the new high voltage. <laughs> Elephants inhabit an acoustic environment of their own. Where dogs and whales are attuned to high frequencies, elephants find themselves at the bottom of the scale. They pick up low frequency or infrasonic sounds well beyond human range. Infrasound in elephants was uh, really discovered in the mid 80s by Katie Payne. Um, she was in a zoo and there were some Asian elephants and she kind of felt this fluttering um, and realized that, that they were actually vocalizing and um, they got some low frequency equipment and recorded these infrasonic calls. Elephants may rely on more than their trademark ears for information around them, especially over long distances. Low frequency sounds travel, at best, 10 kilometers through the air. 
The same sounds or vibrations travel much further through the surface layer of the ground. So are these elephant boots made for talking as well as walking? Elephant feet take quite a pounding and are extremely sensitive. These are more like deep ruts than scars. It takes zookeepers more than just a bit of spit and polish to keep elephant feet healthy, a shoeshine boy's nightmare. At the Oakland Zoo near San Francisco, Dr. O'Connell Rodwell and her team prepare to test an elephant called Donna to see how receptive her feet are to sound. They're going to simulate seismic activity through the ground. It's pretty good. That, this, that's 10. So the idea here with Donna is to um, she's, she's going to be standing on a force platform that's, we're delivering vibrations of 5 hertz, uh, 5 hertz, 10, 15, 20 hertz, and then uh, lowering the, um, the amplitude of that signal every time to try and understand what is the minimum amount of vibration she can detect. Donna is a female African elephant. At first, she's a bit over-enthusiastic, but she soon settles in. Every time she feels a vibration through her feet, she must touch the red disc. The reason we're doing these studies in the Oakland Zoo is to understand exactly how sensitive the elephants are to vibrations of any kind. Um, and we're also planning, once we get this down in this captive environment, to do it in a somewhat semi-captive environment in either Africa or Asia, where the elephants are more accustomed to paying attention to the, the environment um, with not so much noise. She just did that on her own, didn't she? She's done several on her own. That's great. After watching, we watching all those... If elephants videos, sense vibrations things. through the ground, especially those of far away herds, what chance is there that they have their very own language? In thinking of, of animal language and, and elephant communication, it's a very beautiful thing to see elephants up close communicating. Um, they're very tactile animals and very visual animals. They're very aware, their eyes light up and um, they shake their head at each other. So there's a lot going on in close quarters that is most certainly a language for them. 